So the idea is how are we going to take assets uh, and import them into our video game. Now, uh, instead of trying to standardize on a specific asset type or a specific file format, um, I've been playing around with the ASIMP or Open Asset Import Library, which is a pretty decent library written in C++. Um, but as you can see, there's also bindings um, in many different languages that, uh, so it, that it can be used in. And I like the BSD license for the library itself. Now, if you look at the type of file formats that it supports, it supports a pretty broad range of file formats. And what this does is it kind of gives us a ubiquitous interface into being able to load all of these different types of file formats while having a single interface to all of them that we can then use for manipulation in the game. Now, really the, the, the big one that I'm sort of pushing for and the one that I'm gonna demonstrate here is DAE. But of course, any of these would work even with this given example that we're about to do here. Now, why am, I, um, why am I so sort of stuck on DAE? Because DAE is uh, the Collada, as a 3D asset exchange schema. It's XML, I know, JSON people are gonna go nuts, but the nice thing about it is that it's being uh, sort of supported by the Kronos Group, who are the big guys behind uh, OpenGL, uh, and all the different uh, GL sort of tool sets. Um, specifically, um, it, it, you know, it, anyway, it, it, it's pretty verbose standard. It has all of the specifications such as animation, lighting, all the pieces that you're gonna want uh, in your assets. Um, and it's already supported by my favorite uh, sort of uh, modeling tool, which is uh, Blender. So here, just as an example, I've created this uh, Blender sort of scene um, with a couple of objects in it and, uh, uh, you know, just some, squ uh, some spheres, cylinders, uh, cubes, and a plane. And all we have to do is we just simply have to go, once the scene is done, export to Collada DEA. In this case, I'm calling it Untitled we export this file, and once the file is exported, I can now load it into my viewer here. So this is sort of an example of how we can take these assets. And again, it doesn't just have to be a DEA, DAE asset. It can be any of those assets that ASIMP supports. So what ASIMP does is it gives us this uh, sort of ubiquitous um, this ubiquitous object, a scene, um, which we can then load using, uh, let's see, I'm kind of going into code here, um, a real simple, um, a real simple function, import file, we give it the file name, in this case it's that untitled uh, DEA, and it returns to us a scene with all the objects. Now, unfortunately, this scene is not really the data structures in the scene are not really good for using um, using them in the new OpenGL sort of model of doing things where you use um, uh, vertex buffer objects and uh, uh, vertex array bu vertex array objects feed it to a shader and then have the shader do all the math and the and the pretty stuff for you. So what we do in our case is we basically um, in this little area here we get the uh, the scene from ASIMP, we make sure it's there, and then we process the scene into our own scene, and then we release the ASIMP scene. And our scene is the structure, the data structures in our scene are more. Uh, malleable and organized to work better with the VBO uh, vertex buffer objects and the VAO and being able to feed them into our vertex shader and our fragment shader. So how does that all end up looking? Well this is what it ends up looking like. So we had that blender file and as you can see this is really raw stuff. We had that blender file we exported it into DEA and then we have our own program here 
which now then um, is able to load it. And just to show that this is not some kind of a hoax, let's have a little fun. So let's take this object here, let's take this object here first, and let's just scale it in the Z a little bit. And then maybe we'll rotate it and we'll just push it back to the back of the scene here. Maybe we'll take this guy and we'll move it down here. Uh, let's in fact move it down here. And let's take this guy and we'll add a modifier. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe subdivide it a little bit and you know, make it look kind of cool. And then let's go ahead and take this guy and let's actually edit this object and we'll, let's see, loop cut it right there. That looks good. Um, and let's just scale this loop cut for now down to There we go, we'll make it, we'll give it that tie fighter kind of look. And what we can do is even take, um, let's get out of edit mode, let's grab this object here, now let's go back to materials, and I'm just going to go ahead and let's apply, um, let's apply, it's orange, but it's actually blue material. Well, that's the same color as the floor. Let's go ahead and make this one a green one as well. How's that? So as you can see, we've manipulated the file. Um, let's just go ahead and save for now. But what we need to do is we can actually go back into Collada, uh, export this as a Collada DEA file. Um, it's going to be called Untitled. I don't know why that's not showing up as red. Oh, shoot. I did that wrong. Hold on. Sorry. I wanted to say File Export Collada DEA. There we go. I was wondering why that was looking that way. Anyway, so we've exported this file. Now when we relaunch this program, as you can see, we have our new modified scene. And so as you can see, we can quickly take assets from now a Blender or Maya or any other uh, modeling program by using one of the fundamental types, either uh, DAE or FBX or object or whatever file format, and we can import it into our program. So that's the basic idea. And again, most of the heavy lifting is happening here in the scene. So um, what, what are we so far able to do? Well, we're able to pull in the nodes. Um, we're able to find the meshes. We're able to bring in the materials and the lights. Um, textures here in the async library is kind of a, a special texture, which is basically stuff that's actually embedded in the file. If the textures aren't embedded in the file, which in most of these formats they're not, I'm not sure if DA, DAE does embed them, but Blender's export doesn't embed them in there. Um, uh, then we'll have to do some manipulation there. I think the next thing I'm going to start focusing on is actually bringing in the animation. So being able to export an animation using uh, the DAE file format, maybe make one of the boxes fly around uh, in a circular pattern or some pattern or something like that and then see if we can import that. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I think this establishes our framework for being able to import uh, these objects, being able to import from a modeling software directly into the application. Now how once the information is in the application we define what objects are and how they, uh, for example, there's really no physics module in ASIMP at all. Now how do we work with the physics modules and stuff like that? That's, that's something to be had for another conversation, but at least the basics of the asset, the, the meshes and the textures and the way it looks and the UV maps and all that stuff can be imported pretty easily um, from a lot, of different, uh, a lot of different file formats. All right, thanks for listening.